We all have that one dream purchase. That single item which is so undeniably cool that if your wife lets you buy one, you'll never ask to buy any clay shooting equipment ever again. For me, that dream purchase is a clay bot made by Renair Shotgun Sports in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Today, we're gonna to take you on a tour of their factory and show how these are made. We're gonna show you what sets these apart from other manufacturers. And by the end of this video, I think you'll all see how this is actually a fairly practical purchase. It's not just a cool item, but something that I think we could all adopt into our clay shooting routine. So for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy our factory tour of Renair Shotgun Sports. Our journey today starts in Chicago, Illinois. We had come up here for the North Central Sporting Clays Championship and on arrival noticed that the ground crew was not uh, quite as fun as they were in Raleigh. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, they handled my shotgun with the utmost of care. Ooh, ouch. Mine or yours? No, I really didn't know it was yours, but <laughs> it was probably mine. After a short drive north from Chicago, we arrived at Northbrook Sporting Clays just in time for some of the preliminary events for the North Central Regional Championship. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Northbrook, this is one of our country's premier sporting play venues. Large regional shoots like this tend to attract some of the best shooters in the country, and we got to watch some of those shooters compete in the five stand event and other large events while we were there. For those of you who have never been to a big regional shoot, this is one of the best reasons to go. Now, the main reason we were here was to meet with this guy. His name is Casey Rennert, and he is the inventor of the clay bot. Well, it all started uh, as being an avid sporting clay shooter. Uh, back in 2009, uh, I had taken some lessons from Pat Lesky uh, over in Michigan, actually down here at Northbrook, and uh, I was having difficulty hitting certain targets. And Pat got me hitting those targets, and he said a big part of it is you have to practice. And clubs didn't have the ability to let me camp out on a station and shoot chandelles until I had it down. Hitting them early, hitting them in the sweet spot, hitting them late. So as a result, um, I had to come up with a tool that would get me to the point where I could practice my own. And that started a manual unit that we began with a, just a simple machine. And uh, developing the simple machine caused the, uh, uh, the, 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 a standard trap with a standard target and I was able to practice chandelles. I was able to practice teal. I was able to practice curling targets. And this simple machine evolved uh, into what it is today. Uh, 2009, I applied for patent rights. Patent was granted in late 2010. And then we brought the product out and uh, the sales were very good. And it spawned itself due to the feedback we had from the shooters into what it is today because they basically said, can you give us this? Can you make this uh, robotic unit where we don't have to manually adjust? Can we do it at distance? Can you make it so the unit travels by itself and we don't have to pull it with an ATV? And that's what drove the product. All we did was gave the shooters what they wanted. And of course, me being a shooter, I was able to go along the way and it made me a better shooter. I follow all the, I should say all, I used to be able to follow all the customers. Uh, it's grown immensely. Uh, but I do follow as many as I can remember 
and they show me and, and show me by their scores, and then I'll follow up with them and say, hey, is, did the bots have anything to do with that? And in every case, they'll say, couldn't have done it without the bots. Right. And I got a smile on my face because that's what it's for. So uh, you couldn't find uh, a better tool out there for practice and to make people better. It, when you can take a target and you can take that target that you can't hit and you can back that spring off remotely mm -hmm. from a two mile range, well, obviously you can't use it too much, but a two mile, look, let's say I can back the pace off the target and I can find it and then bring the spring back slowly to once that I was missing and now I'm hitting. That's it. That's Very it. Valuable. It's yeah. it's it's extremely valuable, and uh, and and a lot of the shooters. And like I say, I used to be able to say I could rattle off the names of the people that that were bot users. I can't anymore yeah. because it went from hundreds to thousands, and it's amazing how it's taken off. I didn't think there were that many shooters, to be honest with you, but uh, obviously there are. And but they're all great people. Yeah, could you speak a little bit about uh, maybe the diversity of your sales? So you obviously sell to individuals, you sell to clubs. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the mixture uh, for sales? We, uh, clubs I would say are probably 20% of our business. 80% of our business are the individuals. Uh, they're the individuals that got a group of guys. They all pool their money together and they'll buy a bot. And they go to one person's land or if they have a club, the clubs will let them use their land, and they, you know, pay a fee to the club, and they'll go out and they'll practice their targets. Um, uh, everybody that comes through and buys bots, if they buy one, they'll buy another one so they can practice pairs. Right. I've got some customers that have got 20 bots. I've got some customers that have got one, and they practice over it religiously every day. Yeah. Uh, but usually, they'll they'll start with one, check it out. Make sure it's, it's what they want, and then they'll buy another one. Yeah. And when they buy another one, now they're practicing barrel maintenance, barrel management from pairs, shooting reports and crew and things such as that, because the diversity is so great. Uh, when you can take a standard target, a standard machine trap, be it any of the manufacturers, and you can throw Shondell, Teal, Rabbit, you've got it. And you're doing it with a standard target. Right. That's the beauty of this thing. Yeah. And there's nothing on these machines that is captive to us. If you need a part, you can go to Auto Parts and get most of the right. stuff you need. And But we're there for service 24-7. So we are there. And you can talk to anybody in the industry. They call. I'm on the phone. Now, the Mark IV is basically our base mobile unit. It's relatively inexpensive. You can put two in the back of a pickup truck. It gives you the ability to move the trap. As you see, it's a very nimble machine because it can counter rotate and you can basically move this machine in very small control. So I can take this and I can go through moderate terrain. And that's what this will do. There are several features that are standard on all the Claybot models. And one is that the traps are fully adjustable. They're able to move in three different axes, and this allows you to pretty much set any sort of target presentation. Now, the Mark IV is a little bit slower because it's just battery powered, but you do have a fully adjustable spring, and that's one of the killer features of the clay box. Even from a distance, you're able to adjust that spring tension and completely change the speed and distance of that shot. Now there's a little indicator bar on the side so you can see from a distance how tight that spring is. Now you'll see in just a second, they've actually adjusted that feature on their latest model uh, to where it's a dial on the controller. But that uh, bar is actually pretty easy to see even when the clay bot's at distance. Next up is my personal favorite, the Mark III. This particular model is designed to handle the craziest terrain that you can possibly encounter and can launch the targets from a variety of different angles. They even make an amphibious kit for this where they equip an extra set of tires and make it so it'll actually float. Now all these devices are made so that you can actually leave them out in the elements. You know they have a solar panel on there uh, to help charge the battery when it's not in use and all the compartments are either 
uh, weatherproofed or the components inside just really aren't susceptible to water. You know, they're using automotive grade products on here and it really shows. These are designed to be durable and to last. So let's say I have a day where I've got a, a gray sky. Orange targets are hard to view on a gray sky. So what you do with any of the bots, all you do is have black bottom targets, grab the unit, spin it around like I'm doing now. So now I'm going from orange dome to black bottom and I can see them. I can make that shot, I can see that shot. And that's what a lot of guys like. They like the ability to be able to flip that machine around and hey, I'm throwing black bottom now. I can see it. So that's another one of the many versi versatile features of the bot. Now, if those two models that we showed you weren't cool enough, just wait till you see this. Tell you the history on the UTC. About oh three years ago, two years, two three years ago, uh, Rick Hemingway. He came to me and he said, "We need to have a machine that we can outfit with the biggest trap, and we need to have a machine that we don't have to." It, most of our machines, you never have to charge because we have a solar panel on them. Right. But a machine that has a lot more power. And uh, so we went to the drawing board and came up with this machine. This is called the Universal Target Carrier, UTC. Mm -hmm. And it's got joystick controls. And of course, a lot of my other customers that are running that model, the Mark III's or the Mark IV's, because they're in climates like Upper Michigan, things like that, they want the ability to work it with mittens. Mm. So this takes care of that, you, and especially with this, because you can travel it indefinitely, your fingers won't get tired because I've got joystick control. Mm -hmm. So basically, we came up with the UTC. This machine is the top of our line. It is the most powerful. It's got a 25 horse, two cylinder engine on board, variable speed hydraulics. Now, one thing that's different on this machine versus the other machine is your spring adjuster. Because of where we're going, we have got a spring adjuster that's relative to a dial versus mm -hmm. the indicator bar on the side of the adjuster. So what I can do is I can go from low to high, and if we want to go back, I'll show you that, that adjuster. And I can so, adjust yeah. it where oh, yeah, it's extremely fast, and it'll handle the biggest springs on the market with no problem because it's got so much horsepower and ability, we can put attachments on, and this trap comes off and on in five minutes. Okay. So I can have other, it's got a blade attachment, it's got everything, because it's live hydraulics. Yeah. So we utilize that. It also has got a charging system on board where you can charge batteries, you can charge other traps if necessary, and it'll do it all. Because now I can not only, I can pull a lot of weight, I can pull as many traps as you can hook onto this thing, but it also will charge them as well because it's got a very robust charging system on it. So when I do all my trap manip manipulations, throwing targets, uh, adjusting the trap in most, in most areas, spring adjust, things such as that, I don't have to have the engine running. But by the time the engine runs and you drive it 20 yards, the battery's charged up. There's a Group 31 battery in this unit and it doesn't require half of that just because of the robust charging system that's on board. So the unit is designed with strength. Uh, this unit will take all the way, these are 26 inch by 12.5 uh, by uh, 12 inch tires. We go all the way up to 33 inch Terra tires on it if the customers want it. And uh, the speed is also variable. I can change ratios for certain customer applications if they wish, and we can go all the way up to 13.5 miles an hour. And that's fast. And you're saying they're foam filled also? Foam filled tires, 127 pounds a piece. Yeah. And so they, it amounts to them being essentially bulletproof tires. Bulletproof tires, yep. And it's all metal. There's no plastic on it really, other than a few small pieces. However, the unit can take a, take a round. Yeah. So in case you haven't caught on, this is an absolute beast. It's designed to actually mount 
AR-500 steel plates on the side and that allows you to mount a steel target on the top of this thing so if you're into riflery you can actually shoot at this from long distance and uh, have the confidence that the internals of the machine won't be damaged. A real standout feature of this model is the controller which really boosts the usability of the device. When you can actually get that visual indication of the speed of your uh, vehicle as well as the spring tension and pretty much every aspect of what you're trying to control it gives you a little bit more confidence at those longer ranges that the thing is set up correctly another thing that Casey mentioned is that that adjustable speed that you see on the far left is really useful when you're loading this onto a trailer so you know that way you don't drive it through the cab of your pickup truck to see how these clay bots are made we hit the road and headed north we passed through Milwaukee, Wisconsin and stopped for burgers at a place called Benelux. This was a recommendation from Eric Roden over at Bear Pelt and it was simply amazing. This was the first time I had ever been to Wisconsin and Milwaukee's a pretty cool town so definitely worth checking out. Next we headed down the road to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. This is a city that's known for their production of large military vehicles and they also host one of the biggest air shows in the country, if not the biggest. That air show was actually going on while we were filming, so you'll hear those planes during the video. Okay, cool. So we're here today with the guys from Renair, and uh, I think uh, just to get us started, if you guys want to give a quick introduction of, of who you are and uh, your background, just sure. for everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Rennert. I've uh, been with the company really off and on, I guess, since uh, my father Casey started it about uh, going on over 10 years now and now full-time for almost two years. Him and I we used to work together at a, a previous business in the cycling world and um, so we're real good friends for quite a long time and the timing here now to to grow our business uh, at Renair kind of came with the needs for another another set of hands to help out and uh, Nick was looking for something different to do and here we are today. Yeah. So that's a little bit into your background. What kind of stuff did you guys work on before before jumping into this? Um, before being involved in the shotgun sport world, uh, pretty much my entire working career was in the cycling industry. Um, working at bike shops. Uh, my wife and I owned a bicycle store here in Oshkosh for a little under a decade and did that long enough. It was time to kind of switch gears and get into a different industry. Awesome. Okay. Um, so if you could, uh, maybe just talk us through a little bit about this facility, um, how stuff comes in, what goes out, and all the steps in between. Sure. Uh, so we're in Oshkosh, Wisconsin here, and uh, we do uh, kind of the start of our product comes from, from fab shops over in the Manitowoc area. And so when it arrives here, it's in raw form, so we don't have, they're not painted, things might need a, a little bit of work that we do here on site to get that final prep work ready to go for assembly. So we have a, a great, um, great, great relationship with a painter right down the road, and we get our product back within a few days after drop off, and at that point, we will bring it in through, uh, through a loading dock on a truck. So yeah, it comes in, and uh, our on-hand inventory right now is a little on the low side, just uh, we've had a pretty, pretty big uh, change in um, products going out the door, even compared to last year. So we'll funnel a few things in, uh, like the, this for example is uh, just from paint, pick these up. These are basic transporters that will eventually get some wheels put on them and typically our Claybot Mark II mounts up on those. Uh, pick up a few Mark IV tubs that will very, very soon end up in, those are going to South Carolina in the, within the next couple weeks. And um, traps here that are going on to new machines here soon enough. We have a, a good order of traps coming in from Laporte and Atlas as well to kind of match up with the number of chromatics that we have on hand right now. Um, That's another good point. Maybe we just pause there real briefly. Your your machines will any trap can be mounted to. Correct. Yep. So the, the versatility, again, I think is shown there. Um, you guys can work with anything. Yeah, yeah, we work with, uh, with all the trap manufacturers out there. And then uh, we also work with Easy Pull and Long Range for target release. Okay. And so we can have all of that ready to go where uh, if, if you utilize our service to have Nick come and drop off your, your new machine, 
you'll run through it with you and you're ready to start throwing clays within as long as it takes to load the carousel. Right. So we can really give give that end user um, everything that, that they're going to need, yeah. everything at the, their disposal. Right That's there. a great introduction to something new. Like obviously they, they have genuine interest because they've already ordered it, mm -hmm. but you're really completing that service by showing them like, hey, we're bringing it to your doorstep. We're going to show you how to do it. We'll do everything you want to see together while I'm here. And that just gets them off on the right foot. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So no, no initial frustration or misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. All that gets cleared up right up front. So sure. yeah, I could see that being very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess from from there, what we end up doing is uh, when it's time to to actually get something out the door, we come pick what we need from the, the product we keep on hand. Uh, mostly on these shelves here they are just kind of some subframe parts and pieces, uh, different axles uh, like these up top here are wheelie bars that we use on our Mark IV and then um, we use a, uh, it's a trailer hub actually and we use those hubs on every one of our machines gets a number of those. So we keep those uh, pretty much at the ready all the time. Um, other small pieces for like our, our spin heads that we have are going to be stored on here, different sprockets, things like that. Um, we, uh, we run a, a pretty tight ship on our inventory and it just makes it easy for us. Yeah. yeah. So we can keep a little bit more control on, on that side of the business and just have things ready to go when we, we need it. Uh, other areas that we kind of got, we keep some electrical pieces and parts over here. Uh, and same thing on the far side of, um, of kind of our little bit more tight electrical working area that we, we have on this side of the building. Uh, outside of that, once we get everything we need, we bring it over to our assembly tables that we, we threw together. Uh, everything's on wheels, so it makes it really nice and simple if we need to move this around for any reason. Uh, I mean, everything on wheels when I say that, our tables, our assembly tables that we use for um, putting our tools together and our tools, all that, everything's on wheels, so if we need to move something, we can. Um, this is the Mark III that Nick's been putting together here, and we can kind of run you through a few few things on it as it is in, uh, probably, what do you think, about 85% final form, or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah approximately just waiting on, a, on a, wait, waiting on a few more parts to come in, some wheels, obviously solar panel mounted up but uh, as you can see it here it is it is operational so we've got all the basic functionality wired and working um, so obviously forward and back for the drives um, trap spin there um, you know base up and down um, I can't steer it too much of course because it's on the table but right. <laughs> but yeah so it's uh, it's all set and ready to go we just need some need some wheels here we'll slap that on there and uh, uh, a few more uh, more finishing touches on the electrical box and, uh, and we are good to go. And how long does it take to, generally speaking, assemble one of your units? Um, it depends on the product. Uh, for a Mark III, Nick, what would you say your typical? Typically a chassis. I uh, can get you know the chassis typically um, hammered out within a day. Um, the final wiring and everything else about another day and a half. You know, so okay. not, not too terribly long. Our uh, Mark IV, which is typically the, the product that that I've been doing assembly on. It's uh, that smaller tub, uh, just a smaller unit altogether. Uh, and these, I've gotten a pretty good little system down. I can get this done in a day from start to finish. Okay. Um, this one is a far ways from being finished right now. Uh, we're doing a little bit of prototyping on some, a few things uh, just to uh, just make our product a little bit better. And so we're playing around with some stuff with a, with a spring up on, um, on trap tilt on this one, which I'm going to have to tweak around a little bit, but that's the fun of prototyping. Yeah, you continuous to, improvement. You always yeah, want to be getting a little bit better. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I do feel we've we've come quite a long way in the last year, just in some of our electrical work that we've been we've been doing. Everything's been working always really well, but we took some things and just made it cleaner. And in uh, regards to the Mark III, you're going to see a larger electrical box that is going to house all of our electronics. Everything's going to be easy to get to if there is any need to open that up and as a, the end user to get into to troubleshoot whatever it may be. Um, we don't see a lot of issues with our product line but like anything mechanical right. things can happen. Sure. And yeah. uh, We don't want headaches when you have to to get into something. We want it to be easy. Um, 
and I, I feel we're doing a great job of making it easier yet. And uh, yeah, it's been exciting. Yeah, so and it just goes back to customer experience. Uh, the better overall experience someone has with the product, the more they're going to come back to you, mm -hmm. the more they're going to tell their friends and family about, and uh, yeah, it just speaks volumes to what you guys do. So, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, we can take a look over here then too. So uh, this is about complete Mark IV. So this one's going to be ready to go. Uh, I think this one's actually going on a pallet to get sent out to, if I recall, I think Montana. This one's headed to. And um, in our uh, kind of our final staging area over here on the side of the building, this is where we're going to go in and add our wheelie bar that we have on here. Uh, and then put our shroud on the, the top. And from that point, this is a, a finished, ready to go unit. Um, as long as the customer wants a trap put on there, we will get that installed as well. Uh, target release is installed by us, where we have this then 100% turnkey. So uh, the parts you see on our, on our machines, a lot of them are just over the counter, easy to get type of parts. For example, you'd see this torsion spring that we use on here. Uh, those are typically found like on a gate of a trailer. Um, you have our motors. These are typically used on, on say, a dump truck for opening and closing their, their tarp they have that to cover dirt and rock and all that stuff. Um, and the rest of it, the electronics on the inside are mostly relays and circuit breakers that you can get in an automotive store. Uh, there's not much that you can't go and find at a local store if something does for whatever reason go down um, You can fix it the few things that we do have that are are specific to Renair are in this case on the mark II, going to be our towers that we have here uh, Base plates the trailer itself. So I mean we definitely have some some material and product that is very specific to our product line, but those have a lifetime warranty on them. So we stand behind anything that is Renair specific for the life of the product. And everything else is gonna have either a, a pretty decent manufacturer warranty or just get in touch with us about our customer care. We, uh, we're here to help. If something's down, we don't want you to have problems. So we get that up and running within, within days at the very most. Awesome. One thing I wanted to take the time to point out is that these traps are able to spin indefinitely and that is due to the use of technology from the wind power industry used on the big wind turbines like what you saw as we were pulling into Wisconsin. That prevents the wires inside the device from getting tangled up and just means that you don't have to worry about turning it a certain amount one way or the other direction. You can pretty much set it exactly how you like without having to think about it too much. And it's a really nice feature I think. Now, even though today is not a dedicated review of any one product, we couldn't resist the opportunity to drive one around the shop and see if we could get in a little trouble with it. So uh, we wanted to see how this thing manages to climb obstacles. As we mentioned before, the Mark III is the one that's really built for difficult terrain and it articulates in the X axis in the middle to allow for turning and then the front axle uh, articulates in the Y axis and allows you to really cant the entire front part of the device without affecting the stability of the rear of the device, which we'll show you in just a second. Now, especially when you see this thing without a trap on it, the first impression you get is that this is something that belongs on the surface of the moon or on Mars. I mean, it looks just like one of those old lunar rovers. Now, you may be wondering what's behind that blurred area, and we can't show you what it is, but it's really going to be a game changer for both Renair and, in our opinion, the clay target industry as a whole. It's really exciting, and we can't wait to show it to you one day. So, Jeremy and I had a great time touring Renair's factory. It's a really quintessentially American company, in our opinion. You know, this is something born out of the passion of one man, you know, Casey Rennert really went out there and wanted to create a device that he could use. He found that it was so useful that he then wanted to share it with others and it just went from there. Hit the comments and let me know if you'd ever like to see a dedicated review of one of these Claybot models. Personally, I would love the excuse to get to drive one of these around. So just let us know. 
Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.